Hey there, friends. Let's see. I think that this should be working. I just realized I should probably turn off. There we go. I put my phone on Do Not Disturb just so it's not dinging while we're doing this. But hi, welcome to today's live stream. We're going to be talking today about, gosh, what happens when you feel like you lack the time and or the energy you need to successfully podcast. So I feel like this is another one of those things that podcasters struggle with, but either we're not talking about it as a community, uh, which is uh, a large part of the problem, and or there's we feel like there's not really a solution, which is maybe one of the reasons why we're not talking about it in the first place. So um, let's see. I see a few of you are joining. Hello. Hello. <laughs> I'm glad to see you all here. Welcome. Welcome. Oh, good. Um, I love, uh, I know last, the last live stream I did, I talked about how terrified I was of live streaming, but um, I think that I'm starting to make my peace with it. I feel really excited to do today's live stream. I think it's going to be really helpful. Um, and I hope you get a lot out of it. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and, and jump in and the people who are here get the full live stream and the people who aren't here yet can watch the replay later for anything they missed. So I remember um, back in the day, oh, Austin says hello. Hello, Austin. Uh, I remember back in the day when I was first starting my first podcast, um, I was working a full-time job. I was doing a lot of volunteering. Um, I was... Oh gosh, I felt like I was doing all the things. I was running a writer's group downtown. Um, I had a lot going on. Oh, I was doing this um, this women's leadership program that I had enrolled in, um, and that met sometimes during work, sometimes after work. And I remember I was like, I need to start a podcast in all my copious free time. <laughs> So yeah, so um, I feel like that's a thing that we do. We, we get passionate. We want to start things. We want to change the world. We want to create a podcast, get our voice out there. But you get home from work or you get home from wherever you're volunteering or you get home from a board meeting or you get home from picking your kids up from school and you sit on the couch and you're like, it's 7 p.m. and I don't want to move for the rest of the day. So dealing with this energy sap, dealing with this thing that just makes us want to turn on Netflix and just binge until tomorrow, this thing that makes us want to put off working on our podcast until tomorrow when we have energy again. But then the same thing happens the very next day. And it'll keep happening until we learn how to deal with this, how we learn how to deal with um, this time and energy shortage. So if this is something that you've ever struggled with, let me know in the comments. Um, <laughs> if struggling with a lack of time or energy, um, wherever you've been able to slot podcasting in during your day, um, if, if you ever get to that time slot and you're just like, oh, I can't do this right now. I just, I don't have it in me. Let me know in the comments. Um, because that is definitely something that I have uh, struggled with and something that I learned how to manage. So I want to let you know, first and foremost, that you're not alone. Um, like I just said, I deal with this. Many podcasters deal with this. I even went to a special panel in, I don't remember if it was Podcast Movement 2017 or 2018, but I remember I like circled this panel I wanted to go to in the program. And the panel was called like Feeding the Monster or something. And it was four really well-known podcasters like Helen Zaltzman and some other people who I really admire. and. It was about keeping up with 
the demands and expectations of being a podcaster. And it was really interesting to me. I, I went to this, um, I went to this panel really hoping that these famous podcasters who I really admired and who had really amazing shows, I wanted answers from them. I wanted to know like, how do you do this? And consistently every week put out a really high quality show. So um, I went to uh, Feeding the Beast or Feeding the Monster. I don't know. It was some very clever title. And every single podcaster on this panel, all of whom were what I would consider like famous podcasters, like really high tier um, all of them worked with networks. Um, they were all renowned podcasters. Every single one of them said, I struggle so hard to continually come up with new content for my podcast. I continually struggle to find the time and energy I need to work on my podcast. This was really eye-opening for me for a number of reasons. And I guess first and foremost, um, these are famous podcasters and they have huge teams. Like, or I assumed they had huge teams. So each and every one of these uh, showrunners, um, their, their show is on a network. But from what they said during this panel, you know, it sounded like they faced the same lack of time and energy, despite having people on their team, producers or assistants or whatever, um, they were still all miserable and suffering. And that just, that just blew my mind because I had this perception that when you were with a network or when you had um, reliable help uh, to delegate your podcasting work to, that it suddenly became magically easy and you could frolic among the, the podcast roses with ease and all of your problems would be solved. And I don't know, I don't know what I expected, but you know, every single one of these podcasters, they were, they were up there on stage with like this nervous desperation, like looking at each other, like, do you have the answers? Do you have the answers? They didn't have the answers. They mostly just validated the fact that podcasting takes a lot of time and energy. And actually, one of them was leaving podcasting. She was stopping her podcast. So you're not alone. A lot of podcasters struggle with this. So I think the real question here is not how do I get like involved with a network and have somebody else solve all of my problems. I think it comes back to just like in the other three live streams I've done in the last two weeks, I think a lot of it comes down to our mindset. A lot of it comes down to what's going on in our brains and how, as usual, we tend to get in our own way. So the things that I wanna talk about are, I have a little list over here to the side. How do we do this anyway, despite the perceived lack of time? I wanna first and foremost say that along the lines of joining a network, not solving all of your problems, I wanna tell you that podcasting, if you want to start a podcast, if you want to grow your podcast, if you want to uh, just keep, if you're podcasting now and you just want to continue, this is not contingent on you podcasting full time. I want you to know that. I've, I go to a lot of podcasting conferences and 
inevitably I talk to podcasters who are a little bit envious of what I do. And so to back things up, I am in a place right now in my life where um, I podcast full time. And I do this because I'm self-employed. But podcasting full time and doing what I do doesn't mean that I'm sitting here like talking into a mic eight hours a day. It means that I'm doing administrative stuff for my business and I'm writing other projects and I'm doing other things to like help make money for my business. Um, so working on your podcast full time, quitting your job is not necessarily the answer. I have so many podcasters who say, I would start a podcast if I could quit my job and podcast full time. Or, you know, one day when I quit my job, then I'll be able to start a podcast. And I want you to know that you, it's cool if you can do that. But, yep, I knew she was climbing up. Sorry, this is my cat Midori. I don't know if you can see her. I don't know which way to lean. Hi. Yeah, are you gonna say hi? Here, say hi. Yeah. So this is Midori. Um, she's just gonna hang out here for a while while I do this live stream, so I hope that's okay. Um, it's also snowing, so I think she's watching the snow. Let's see, I'll, I'll let you like take a look at her here. Just, just pivot her a little bit. Anyway, um, so you don't need to quit your job to podcast. And in fact, um, there's several podcasters whom I've encouraged to hold on to their day job. And maybe, it, you know, if they're interested in turning, tuning down the hours, I'll suggest going part time for a while and like building up the runway that they need to be on their own safely. But um, a full-time job, even though it can take a lot of time and energy that you would otherwise like to use for podcasting, um, it keeps you uh, in a good place financially. And it can be a very nice thing to be able to rely on. And it can give you the creative freedom that you need to make the podcast that you want to make. So I know that sounds a little counterintuitive, but um, I give similar advice to writers as well. Like, if you are working a job that is not incredibly creatively demanding, then enjoy the money you're making and use your free time, expend your creative energy during your free time or the time that you've set aside to write or podcast. Um, so a, a day job is not necessarily uh, this evil thing. Austin says, start a podcast with the goal of quitting your job. I like that. I like that mindset. I feel like that's a better order in which to do things because that ties in with my next point. Um, and that is, what are you doing with the time and energy that you have right now? So time and energy are a little bit different. Um, this was something, <laughs> this is something I had to learn, believe it or not. Um, I remember I did a, a Right Now podcast episode on this subject, oh boy, I want to say just a few years ago, um, when I was first learning about uh, how things work, I guess. I don't know. I feel like I'm this new soul who needs to learn everything the hard way all the time. And I had to realize that the problem that I was having wasn't about time because we all have 24 hours in a day. I have 24 hours in a day. You have 24 hours in a day. Uh, Jeffrey Craner has 24 hours in a day. Bill Gates has 24 hours in a day. All of those people on stage at Podcast Movement have 24 hours in their day. And so it's not necessarily about getting more time in your day because I don't think you can do that. I mean, unless you have the Harry Potter time turner, and if you do, let me know because I'm going to borrow it. Um, you're not going to get more than 24 hours in a day. Now, what you can do is manage that time, and what you can do 
is manage the energy that you're expending throughout your day. So these are two things that we can control. So we can't control how many hours are in the day because that's a little, little be, a little beyond me, a little beyond time travel and time magic is a little beyond me. But everyone has these twenty-four hour days. But where the difference comes in between the people who are getting things done that we wish we could do and us. That comes in how we use the time that we've been given and how we expend our energy during that time. So Katerina Fake has an excellent quote about this. I'm just going to read it to you. She says, so often people are working hard on the wrong thing. Working hard on the right thing is probably more important than working hard. So basically what she's talking about here is prioritizing. And I know this sounds like, like really 101, but how are you prioritizing your time? How are you prioritizing your energy? There's another concept that doing things does not equal getting things done. So work does not necessarily equal work. So I'll break this down a little bit. Um, I can sit here at my desk and I can be very busy. I can be very busy uh, checking Twitter and I can be very busy checking Facebook and I can be very, very busy uh, writing and rewriting and rewriting a third time an email to someone. And I can be very busy, um, I don't know, doing something that doesn't really move the needle for my business or my podcast. That is not the same thing as doing good work. Doing busy work and doing good work are very different things. In the same amount of time that it takes me to write and rewrite and rewrite and rewrite an email for something that doesn't really matter a whole lot, I could be outlining my next three podcast episodes. Okay, she's done sitting on the chair. Um, it's, it's interesting. I think even in looking at how we spend our time, we also need to be looking at how and what kind of energy we're expending during that time. So here's another example. You can be at your desk at work furiously working on a proposal or you know something that's due coming up and i don't know if you've done this but take a look at what kind of energy you're expending at work and how you feel when you get home and what kind of energy you need to put toward your podcast This is part of the reason that I encourage you to prioritize because I don't really know how to say this in, in a very polite way, so I'm just going to say it in a less than polite way. Maybe your career, maybe your job that you go to isn't a priority. Maybe you're just going there to make money, to do an adequate job, to get by, so that when you get home, you can focus your real energy on your podcast. I feel like that's a little bit blasphemous to say, um, but I said it. Like Austin said earlier, there may be some of you for whom your day job is purely a means to an eventual podcasting end. And I encourage you to treat it that way. I encourage you to be really intentional about how you spend your time and your energy, especially your energy when you're at work. Ah! 
One moment, please. Midori wants out of my office. Yeah, I know. Here. Yeah, there you go. Okay. This is one of those times I'm like really glad I'm wearing pants. <laughs> Uh, let's see. Tim asks, how did you preserve your creative energy throughout the drudgery of the nine to five grind? How do you carry that energy through the work week into your creative free time? A lot of that has to do with your mindset, I think. And I don't want to speak for everybody because it might be different for everybody. But um, when you're at work, I think realizing that you don't need to give in to the stress and pressure that everybody else is giving into, understanding that you can take breaks, understanding that you can even have a little notebook next to your computer maybe at work or whatever your work situation is, where you can jot down ideas for your podcast or a little to-do list for when you get home and you can keep yourself excited about it throughout the day. At the end of the day, literally and figuratively, your podcast should be something that you're looking forward to. It should be, well, I don't wanna say should, it can be something that you use as a treat. Doing things is not the same thing as getting things done. So it's really important for you to understand the difference between busy work and real work. And in order to make that differentiation, you're going to need to make some priorities about what busy work entails and what real work entails and how to expend your energy for each of those different tasks. This is a lot of like, theory kind of stuff. This is this is a lot of it doesn't sound super applicable. But oh, Derek says my day job pays the bills, keeps a roof over my head, keeps food in the belly. My podcast is the creative outlet work that I need. Yes. 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 <laughs> That's how it was for me too. And especially when I started my fictional podcast Girl in Space, like that was just really that was really exciting and a really 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 great uh expenditure of energy. So yeah. Um let's see. So I think what I would challenge you to do is to evaluate how you are using your time and how and what kind of energy you are expending in every task that you do throughout the day. And you can do this in a spreadsheet uh, and just say like, or you can do it on your calendar and just say like 8 a.m. Oh, I realized that every day from 8 to 9.30, I spend an hour and a half reading emails that I don't need to do. Okay, then that's busy work. And you can start looking at your schedule and how you spend your time. Or maybe you realize that, um, let's see, sorry, I'm looking at my notes here, that you accidentally spend two and a half hours every night scrolling through Twitter or Facebook. And maybe that's not a priority for you right now. The thing with priorities is that if they're actual priorities, if they're actual priorities, then it'll be really hard to get distracted from them. I did a little thing on my phone and that was, I set a, I don't know if this is supposed to be for like parents controlling their children's phones. I think that that's what it's for. Um, but I set this little thing up that kicks me off of uh, social media applications uh, after a certain amount of time. So I only have a certain budget of time I can use every day on Facebook and Twitter. Um, and some other things as well. So that's one idea of something you can do. But really, evaluate your day. And you can do this for a couple days in a row. Um, and then you can decide what you want to do with weekends or whatever days off that you have from work. Um, but really be honest. I was shocked when I realized I was spending four or more hours a day on Facebook and Twitter. 
Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. That was, that was how I was spending my time. And that's how I was spending my focus and my concentration and my energy was reading tweets and getting really angry about like political things I didn't agree with and like social injustices that were happening and all of this stuff. And I was getting righteously indignant and expending my good creative energy on thinking about other people's problems and how I would respond cleverly on Twitter to them. And so, yeah, so that's how I got four hours of every day back that I can now use wisely. So what are you prioritizing? What are you focusing on? I do want to point out, this is another trap that's really easy to fall into and that I fell into for years. So this was really early on um, in my, my post-employment career. So when I first left my day job to do my own thing full time, I was consulting, I was ghostwriting, I was doing a whole bunch of different things to make money. And at the time, um, I was charging $150 an hour for marketing consulting, um, website consulting, just a lot of stuff that I was an expert in doing and I knew I could do to make money. And so I got this really, really sick notion in my head that because my time is worth $150 an hour, if I spend an hour watching Netflix or playing video games or hanging out with my family, that was $150 I was wasting. That took me to a really bad place. And so I want to tell you that one of your priorities should be taking care of yourself and resting and making sure that you have time to watch Netflix and play video games just maybe don't do it for four hours straight. So there's sort of everything in moderation is kind of what we're talking about here. I don't want you to stop sleeping so that you can podcast. Um, and, and I can speak to that from experience because uh, I've also been through times in my life where I decided that I was a machine who never needed to rest and uh, Boy, somebody said this on Twitter really well the other day, but if you do not take the time to rest, your body will take the time for you, by which I mean you will crash and burnout is not pretty. So prioritize your time. Look at how you're spending your time, but also make sure that you're leaving some time to like rest and recharge your brain because that is really important, especially if you're doing creative work. Creative work takes a lot of replenishment. Okay. So please take good care of yourselves. So be intentional, I think is what I'm saying with your priorities, with your focus, with your time and with your energy. Now, Another thing that I want to talk about, because I have four mindset shifts that I want to talk about, and this is number three. I've mentioned before a lot of the shoulds that come up in podcasting. Oh, my sister Rebecca's here. Hi, Beck. Thank you for coming. <laughs> So I've talked about shoulds before, the use of the word should, and there are a lot of these shoulds that we as podcasters accept without question. And these are things like your show should be between 30 and 45 minutes long, or your podcast should come out bi-weekly or weekly, you know, stuff like that or daily. I don't know who's telling you that. Don't listen to them. They want to ruin you is what they want to do. But the question that we need to be asking is, does that should 
makes sense for me. Does that should work for me? So I've seen so many podcasters go outside of the shoulds and shoulds are often talked about synonymously with best practices, which I mean, sure, best practices have their place, but if adhering to them is keeping you from podcasting or from starting your podcast, then throw those best practices out the window. There are so many people right now who are doing really cool things. Um, A.R. Olivieri has microfiction, so each of his shows are two to three minutes long, and he does that because of work constraints. He saves his energy and makes short shows, and that's what he can do to keep podcasting. And like, if that works for you, maybe that's something that can uh, that you can try out. Your show doesn't need to be between 30 and 45 minutes in order to be successful. I mean, look at Dan Carlin and Hardcore History. He has six hour episodes that come out like twice a year and he's doing just fine. So go through your brain, little Rolodex in your brain. And this is another exercise that I'd encourage you to do is write down all of the shoulds. And once you have them all written out, I want you to evaluate which ones make sense for you, for your lifestyle, for the type of show you're making, and for what you want to do for your audience. What do you have the time and energy to do? Maybe you're going to make three-minute episodes that come out once a month, and that's okay. That's what works for you. That's awesome. The only things that you'll need to do in that scenario, if you're going uh, off the book, is make sure that you're managing your audience's expectations. So in your iTunes, excuse me, in your Apple Podcasts, I'm still getting used to that, in your Apple Podcasts description or whatever, uh, wherever you submit your RSS feed, in your meta description for your show, just, you know, establish like, hey, this is a fun uh, weekly show and each episode is about three minutes. You know, say it in a, in a clever way. Just let the audience know what they can expect. Um, I had a, ugh, I, this is another lesson that I learned. This is like lessons with Sarah. So um, when I was doing Girl in Space, initially it was going to be bi-weekly, which meant uh, every other week I would have a new episode out which because I was creating it as I went along, didn't necessarily happen. It takes a long time to write a 30 minute script and get all your actors lines out and get them back in time and get the whole episode edited with sound effects and music and all of that stuff. So um, I did not set expectations appropriately in my show description. Um, and so there are a lot of angry one star review givers who are like, Hey, I thought this was supposed to be a bi-weekly show. Uh, you haven't come out with a new episode in like three months. And so just make sure that you're setting your audience's expectations accordingly. Uh, along with that, um, make sure that you're managing your own expectations for your show, for what you get out of your show. Um, understand what making shorter episodes might mean for you. Understand what making... Uh, if you're like Dan Carlin and you just come out a few times a year, understand what that could mean for you and your show and manage those expectations. This leads into my fourth and final, well, it's not my final point, my fourth point, which is ultimately evaluate what you want to get out of your podcasting experience. I've polled a lot of podcasters. And if you're in uh, my Seriously Successful Podcasters group, I had you answer some questions when you first joined the group. One of those questions was, um, what does podcasting success look like for you? What do you want out of this experience? 
and I got a huge variety of answers. Some people said, I just want to have fun with my friends. Some people said, I want a lucrative TV deal. Um, some people said, I'd like to make just a little money to cover hosting costs and equipment costs and pay my actors. And then there was a sliding skill to the other side where there were people who said, I want to make a full-time income from my podcast. And so understanding ultimately what you want out of your podcasting experience can help you understand how much time and energy you need to allocate to making this thing happen. So plan for your priorities. Make sure that you're being intentional with not only your time, but with your energy. Take a step back. Plan and see what do you actually have the time and energy to do and how can you form your show around that? At the end of the day and at the end of all of this, I think what I'd like my message, my takeaway for you to be is Shift your focus away from everything that you can't do and start focusing on what you can do with the time and energy that you have. Stop focusing on the lack or the perceived lack and start focusing on the abundance. What do you have to work with? What resources do you have? How can you be resourceful with your time and your energy? Often we're focusing on the wrong things. What are you focusing on that is maybe the wrong thing? Brian Goodwin says, your podcasts can never be too long, only too boring. I heard that once from Rob Walsh at Libsyn, and it's really stuck with me. And it's absolutely true. And this is, it's one of the reasons why should is so toxic for podcasters. Because a lot of times the shoulds aren't based on data. They're based on assumptions that everyone's making. They're based on us looking at our, our neighbor's test and seeing like, oh, you put A for question one, that must be right, so I'm gonna put A. But nobody says A is the right answer. And what even is a right answer? What's right for you? What's right for your podcast? Only you know that. I'm looking through comments. Jimmy asks, but what's the right thing if you don't really know what you're doing? That's why, my friend Jimmy, it is so important for you to know ultimately what you want to get out of the podcasting experience. It all goes back to what success means for you and for your show. It all goes back to, what do I want out of this? Do I want to just have fun? because that's perfectly amazing. Do I wanna make $700,000 a year podcasting? That's also amazing. What you want out of it, what your definition of success is, determines what the right work is that you should be doing, what your priorities are. That is such a fantastic question. Oh, my friend Lindsay's here. Hey, Lindsay, I'm glad to see you. We're just talking about podcasting. I hope this was helpful. I hope this was helpful for you. Because at the end of the day, it's not about outrunning some kind of avalanche. It's not about your podcast coming to get you and trying to mow you down with too much work that you can't handle because you don't have enough time or energy. We're creators and we're creative people. We have a lot of creative energy. If you find yourself 
coming home from work at the end of the day and sitting on the couch and not wanting to move and not wanting to work on your podcast. It might even be time to reevaluate your podcast and get excited about it again. I tell this to the writers and the other creators who I coach. It's maybe there's a reason you're not excited about this project. And maybe there is a way that you can shift or change it to make it more interesting, to revive your passion for it, to remind yourself why you started this, why it's important, why you did this in the first place. It's so interesting to me that even famous podcasters with large teams who work with network resources struggle with this issue. Which is why I say it's not necessarily a time issue because we all have 24 hours in the day. But how are we using them? Are you doing busy work? Are you doing real work? And how are you expending your creative energy? All right. <sighs> Austin says, Haha, I haven't sat on my couch in weeks. I spend all of my time in my studio. I hope that when you do that, it's fulfilling and that's what you want to be doing. And that's the other thing is... I talk about energy a lot and you're either doing activities that drain your energy or that give you energy. And I want you to be in a place where your podcast gives you energy, where your podcast is almost a self-sustaining little engine, where you get home from work and you're just like tired and your shoulders are sore and you walk in the door and you're like, yeah, I get to work on my podcast. And you're just like, yeah, this is fantastic. That's what I want for you. I want you to be in a place where your podcast is energizing you. And I think that you've probably been in a place before where if you're working on a creative project that energizes you, that you're excited about, that you get into this place of flow where time stops existing. I've only been in this place like a handful of times in my life, but like there's been those nights where I'm like writing scripts for Girl in Space and I've just lost all track of the world around me and I'm just creating and it's just me and my show and I'm just so excited and I get so much done when my energy is in the right place. So thank you for sharing that, Austin. All right, I'm gonna run away. I haven't done a whole lot of resting today, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna run away. I hope that this was helpful for you. Um, I really do encourage you to do that exercise where you evaluate how you're spending your time and energy each day. And whether that's during the workday, whether that's on the weekends, take a look and really be honest. And I think that you'll find a lot of missing time. I think you'll find a lot of, I don't want to say wasted time, but time that you would have preferred to spend doing more meaningful things. So that's your homework for today, is to go ahead and evaluate your day. Put your good time and your good energy toward creating things that matter, things that are important to you, things that infuse you with energy. All right, it's Friday night. So uh, I feel like us podcasters, I don't know if we go out partying, but uh, let's go out podcasting. <laughs> so everybody go get to work on your podcast for the next 30 or 40 minutes. And I hope you have fun doing it. All right. Bye for now. Thank you again for joining.